Welcome, everybody, and thank you so much for coming. So we're just going to start with our wonderful opportunity now. So we open our hearts and we just send love and gratitude to all the life on this beloved earth. Let's take some slow, deep breaths to get into that peaceful, receptive state. So we breathe in slowly and deeply. We hold our breath. We breathe out. And then we hold our breath. Let's do that for a few more breaths. Now let's listen for our heartbeat. Our heartbeat, which is a pulse of light coming down through the silver cord from our mighty iron presence anchoring in our heart, giving us life. Let's just see and feel and bless that heartbeat. That heartbeat that anchors into that beautiful threefold flame which is the anchorage of our mighty I am presence within our physical bodies. Let's just connect with that beautiful flame as we sit in that expanded golden flame in the center, golden yellow flame of wisdom and illumination, perception and discrimination. We see our bodies in this beautiful dazzling golden flame to the right, we can see the pink flame, that glorious, dazzling pink flame of pure divine love. And then we see to the left of us that beautiful expanded flame, that sapphire blue, bringing into us the feeling of the will, the power, the faith and the protection from our mighty I Am Presence. See and feel and bless this glorious light. Let's take our awareness now up through the top of our head, through the silver cord, to our mighty beloved I Am Presence. Let's see this glorious, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving presence smiling down on us. our wonderful presence of God, I am. And now we see in the center of our chest, a beautiful golden sun forming. Dazzling and brilliant, like the noonday sun. The beautiful focus of light from our I am presence. Open our hearts and send love and gratitude to our mighty I Am Presence for beating our heart and giving us life. And now we see those rays from our beautiful sun in the center of our chest, dazzling and brilliant, billions and billions of rays going forth and connecting up with each and every miniature sun in all the cells of our bodies, our four earthly bodies, all those little inner workers receiving this expanded light. Let's feel the joy, the happiness and the gratitude of each and every little inner worker of our four earthly bodies. Sense and see and feel that wonderful light saturating our earthly bodies. And now let's just fill our feelings with a feeling of love and gratitude. And let's call to the beloved Ascended Masters, the beloved Ascended Master David Lloyd, the great God of gratitude, to fill us, each one and all mankind, with this feeling, that light substance, 
from the ascended master realm of gratitude and love. We see our beautiful suns turning a deep shade of pink with a golden radiance. Gratitude and love for all our many, many blessings. Gratitude and love to the great ascended hosts for these marvelous teachings. Gratitude and love for all our loved ones and our friends. Gratitude and love for our homes and our supply. Gratitude and love for all the many, many blessings that we receive daily on our earthly journeys. Gratitude to the great and beloved elemental kingdom, animate and so-called inanimate, the beauty and bounty of nature. God bless, love and thank them, each and every precious one. Gratitude to the beloved angels. And gratitude to all life on our beloved earth. And now we see these rays in this wonderful expanded state, forming a lattice of light, dazzling and brilliant. We see our entire earth folded in this glorious pink and golden light saturating every part of life on our beloved earth, especially those parts of life that are never loved or thanked with this wonderful gift, our opportunity of sending love, light and gratitude to all life. And we just give deep, deep thanks for this. You're muted, beloved. Oh, no wonder I'm not getting any response. <laughs> God, sorry, everybody. Um, I was actually asking Linda, Linda Harrigan, if you could read for us, beloved. I would love to. Thank you. Beloved presence of God, I am. It is thy life and intelligence that enables me to read and comprehend and absorb that which is required of me. For life, I am so grateful. Beloved Master Kathumi, I ask for your feeling and your capacity to use this instruction for God's glory and mankind's comfort. We thank you. And now, great I am presence, take me within thyself. There instruct me and cause me to retain the full memory of these inner instructions. Thank you. And this was from beloved St. Germain. Thank you so much, beloved. Bless you. Okay, so the topics for the week, we've got John who recorded for, for us, bless him. Um, Ascended Master Bob, he read it beautifully. So thank you so much, John. And then we've got a, a video that I actually made from the Jesus, the life and teachings of Jesus and Mary. Um, it's just so lovely. Um, I just, I thought it was really good understanding of, of the different cycles and what have you. So we've got that one. And then Terry's going to read really, oh, Moira fired up and it was just such a powerful, powerful um, reading. So just lovely. And thank you, beloved um, Terry. We were talking about it just now, the will of God and is the Christ in action. And then I'm going to read from beloved Emmanuel. And um, as we know, well, no, I mean, we might not know, but he is the divine complement of the planetary silent watcher, Immaculata. So it's lovely. And as we know, the Hebrew 
of Emmanuel means God is with us. So just lovely. And then beloved Antoinette will take us through our wonderful opportunity of just calling for the light and saying our decrees. So we're going to um, start with John's reading. Thank you. Ascended Master Bob, Exodus from I Am Discourses, Volume 12, Discourse 4. When you behold an Ascended Master in a tangible body for the first time, you will know what my words mean to you tonight. There is humble dignity, the greatest in the universe, and if any one of those great ones was suddenly to stand forth visible before you, and a light blaze forth from those eyes, would you know the dignity of life? Life in itself, beloved ones, in your very veins and beating your heart, is that dignity, is that happiness which every heart is craving. But because mankind has not understood, it continually keeps accepting the appearance world of limitation and conditions of disturbance until that energy cannot produce what it naturally is. Do you not see, beloved ones, that this life which flows into your body and beats your heart of itself is that dignity, happiness, and power of life which knows no opposite? And then to think that mankind has so forgotten that, that in their allowing most undesirable qualities to clothe that energy as it goes forth, it then returns, bringing more of its kind to them. These are the things that mankind must understand, and you must not mind if we keep this before your attention. It is the most vital thing in the world. The messengers have preached harmony in your feelings for four years. Dear ones, you cannot be free unless you see those things, those qualities within yourself, and eradicate them by the power of the light that beats your heart. How much do you think your higher mental body loves you? You think you love each other sometimes, but think. Think of the Ascended Masters and your higher mental body. Think of the activity for your I am presence. It never for one minute has a single thought or feeling, except just pouring forth its love and blessings to you and through you. And when it cannot get through unqualified sometimes, if there is too much disturbance, it just withholds the energy then you feel all wrung out. Oh, I know all about these things. Just think of it, beloved one. Only just a few years ago, we children were in limited bodies the same as the rest of mankind. And when this great so-called miracle took place, we found ourselves so free and able to render such a wonderful service. Oh, dear ones, Buckle on your armor. Do whatever is necessary to maintain harmony in your feelings so that your presence can pour forth its mighty cleansing, purifying power, its harmonizing presence, so that you can go forth free, wholly free. Many of you are standing at the doorway of that perfect happiness. And of course it brings a limitless supply of everything you require. Oh, don't you see it? Don't you feel it, dear ones? I am sure you do. This is quite a serious thing with individuals, but it is certainly comical to us. We see individual actions. Oh, they are so enthusiastic and so dynamic. And all of a sudden, something pops up in front of them, and instead of saying to that appearance, you have no power, they say, oh dear, what am I going to do? It is true, very true, dear ones, but that is the moment you are off guard. Many later straighten up, then and face the thing and throw it out. You know there is not one thing in this world, precious hearts, that can terrify you. Then what do you suppose it is? It is just yourself. It is not the thing or the condition that deprives you, but just yourself. It is very wonderful, beloved ones, for in this repetition, hundreds and hundreds are gaining that perfect confidence in themselves and their application, and they are seeing more and more clearly these little things. So many little things that they have paid no attention to, whatsoever, have built into that structure which brings terrific fear. 
just here, there and everywhere, they have gathered those little things. They have taken them into their feeling world, and they were not aware of it, and all of a sudden it comes forth. Do you know there is no cause for fear in the world? St. Germain gave me one of the most amazing lessons at the time referred to in the books, when he asked us, the quartet, to sing. I had never sung in public, and for a moment I just was terrified at the very thought. And when he said to me, Bob, don't you trust me? Well, that was a little too much. With his spoken word, I afterwards knew that whole thing cause, effect, and record, was dissolved within me, for I never had it again. Now that is just the way with your I am presence. It can release its power of dissolving energy into your body and your feeling world, which will dissolve cause, effect, and record. Marvellous. Just so lovely. Thank you, beloved John, for reading that. And such a good example, because it's nice to remember. I mean, there they were in the 30s. They were just like us. So there they are. And there's been many that have ascended, we know, since then. But it's just a lovely example of the physical of how Saint Germain just took it straight out of them all, out of uh, Bob, that fear. Now we're going to listen to this video. Pontius Pilate was procurator or the Roman governor of Judea under Roman rule, and Herod, Antipas, was tetrarch or king of Galilee for the Jewish people, when John the Baptist, still in the desert, got his divine direction to go forth on his mission. Aeneas and Cephas were the chief priests of the temple at Jerusalem at that time. They were definitely tools of the sinister force. One may note that, at the time of great release of light to mankind for its freedom, how the sinister force always builds up and stations the greatest obstruction by putting its most satanic tools in the most important positions. In this case, the priesthood. It ever seems to be that way. For the new age in Jesus' time, John, the precursor of Jesus, brought forth the confession of sin and baptizing by being washed in water which symbolized cleansing of the soul, the blotting out of sin. It has been the sign of discipleship until the close of this era. This was a new action, a step forward, over their custom of burning sacrifices of animals or fowl to atone for their sins. This was near the beginning of what is called the Piscean Age. According to astrology, Pisces being a water sign of the zodiac, the accepted symbol for it is two fishes. John claimed he was not the Christ, but had been sent before him. He was but preparing the way, using baptism by water. He carried on his baptisms in the waters of the Jordan. This was working on the level of the human being. Giving physical sacrifices came out of or resulted from the law of karma, which is the action of cause and effect. That is, when one has created or set up or set into action a cause, good or bad, he must reap the result. When bad, and it resulted in suffering, it produced a sacrifice. So in olden days they set up the custom of sacrificing some treasured possessions to the gods, supposedly to the divine, to atone for their sins, hoping to alleviate or escape the reaping. These earthly things, as man values them, meant nothing, too, and were of no use to God, but to the priesthood they meant much. John said that he baptized with water, but one greater than he, who was already in their midst, would come forth and baptize with fire, the Holy Spirit, which is an action of the fire element, the sacred fire. He would burn up the chaff, which symbolized human creation, with unquenchable fire, which is the sacred fire, and an action of that is a transmuting violet flame. John preached repentance, for the kingdom of heaven was at hand. This meant the coming Messiah, Christ, 
was to give a new action of the law to redeem one's bad or destructive karma, wrongdoings, sin, which is the result of miscreation, misuse of one's own energy. Jesus did not use water. He brought the Christ action, which is of the fire element. He employed the sacred fire in his works. This is how the healings and all the miracles took place. So no matter what the age, the Christ action or divine powers are always the same. The understanding of it or the bringing of it into action may vary some, but that is on the human side. To repent is to admit one's wrongdoing and be willing to try and make amends. This is a big step, but to completely fulfill the law, there is more to it than that. In creating the wrong, energy was used, that is, energy was wrongly qualified, which affected others. Now, all that energy must be redeemed and purified. This is done by calling on the law of forgiveness, and then calling forth the transmuting violet flame through it. Then one can call to the iron presence to pour forth light rays to bless all who had been ill-affected by the wrong. When one is willing to admit the wrong and then call on the law of forgiveness, then he can have the benefit of the law of grace, the transmuting violet flame. The inner action of repentance is a change of thought and feeling. These are one's creative faculties by which one is constantly creating either good or bad. We have free will and choice and have to choose how we wish to use these faculties every instant of the day and night while awake or asleep, as they are active at inner levels while we sleep. We can direct our attention to anything or place we choose and also withhold it from going where we do not want it to go. We can think whatever kind of thought we choose. We can feel whatever kind of feeling we choose. We have the ability to change any or all three of them at any time. So when one changes his thought and feeling, at least he stops building more of the same kind. In repenting, the attitude is a hope that God will forgive them. Through repentance, one comes under an action of the law of grace, a reversal of attitude, a redirection of thought and feeling starts to bring about a process of purification. Now we have the knowledge of the use of the transmuting violet flame which one can set into action to transmute karma, not only misqualified energy in this lifetime for which one is repenting, but also that of all previous embodiments. By the use of the violet flame, one can also completely remove the desires and motives which cause misqualifications, and even those one is not aware of, as well as the etheric records they have made. What is generally termed the subconscious is these records. Thus one can remove the causes, cause, effects, records and memories. Now, through this understanding, one also has the opportunity to render a balance to life by calling forth the same action for all mankind and also make a balance for the far-reaching influence it may have had on others. John the Baptist used water. Then Jesus came and said, Moses brought law, and I bring grace. The Mosaic law was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. This meant one had to balance his karma by experiencing the same wrong he had imposed on another, which was supposed to teach him the needed lesson. One can readily see mankind would never become free by that means alone. This is the action of the fifth ray, the ray of science, which was active then and was about to close. It was at the time of the fifth ray changing to the sixth. It was the time for the sixth ray to come in. At the beginning of the sixth ray cycle was when Jesus, a sixth ray individual, came on the stage, earth, to play his part in life and to bring a new phase of the law. Jesus' work and teaching was based on Judaic traditions, which were fifth ray teachings. The fundamental principles of universal law, cosmic law, which governs all life expression, do not change. Yet different phases of the law are brought about at various times. These actions are emphasized and enhanced and predominate for that period. At present, 
we are again at such a time, now changing from the sixth ray to the seventh. Now, under this ray, the mysteries are revealed, which set aside secrecy which predominated in the previous cycles, and was why Jesus spoke in parables. The cosmic law did not permit certain knowledge to be given then. It was the New Year's Eve of 1930 when the old occult law was set aside. Occult means hidden. Then this new teaching came forth, giving the so-called lost word the key to self-mastery. This word, or words, is I am. The word itself was not lost, as man has been saying it every day. Yet the knowledge, the meaning, the right and full use of it, and its importance, had been lost to mankind en masse. <laughs> Okay, so that was just really well said, Alice. Just so brilliant talk. And um, so now, beloved, take read that. And um, hold on a sec. I'm going to change the screen. Thank you, beloved Terry. Thank you. Greetings, everyone. The will of God is the Christ in action, an address by beloved El Moria. Beloved students of the light, I greet you today in the full dynamic power and will to do of the first ray, which it is my privilege to impress and press and press upon your consciousness. It is my mission at this hour to fire you into action, fire you out of the lethargy of the ages, Fire you to be true radiating centers of the will of God on this planet Earth. We require viewing world conditions and the individual disgrace, disgraceful conditions in your towns and cities all over the planet, dynamic, positive chilas, who will go into action and wipe these imperfect conditions off the face of the Earth. How? I assure you, not by a call now and again but constant dynamic demands on the cosmic law for assistance. Yes, I have repeated the word dynamic for that impelling force is required. Invoke Lord Michael, Lord Zadkiel, Lord Astria, the goddess of purity, any of us with whom you have an affinity. And of course, if you feel that you have advanced to the point where you are now God in action, well, your own I am presence alone. Children, children, of course your own presence is all-powerful and, and can fulfill any and all calls instantly, but I do not require a magnifying ray to look into your life streams. I know what is there. Yes, both sides of that ledger. Forgive me if I make so bold and perhaps incur your displeasure. That nonsense is only of the outer self, so no matter. If you are the directing intelligence of the Christ in action at all times, then you are the presence in action. Notice I say, if, with a raised eyebrow. The only separation between your I am presence, your Christ self, and you is your consciousness. The Christ self is a step down of radiation from the presence, enabling you to move more quickly enabling you to more quickly be God in action. Let us take, for example, the dwelling in which you abide. When you are outside and open the door and enter, you are in the dwelling, but that does not necessarily mean that you are in the living room or bedroom, as the case may be. You have to transport yourself to the specific spot, having bodies made up of the elements of this earth. Now, your consciousness does not have to move the physical body anywhere in matters of the spirit. 
It is your cognizance of what you desire that is important. The I am presence and the Christ are one. Can you grasp that? Through the graciousness of the spiritual law and the magnanimous service of the cosmic I am presence, the presence can be anywhere in the universe rendering service and yet have a part of itself in the physical appearance world through the anchorage of the presence in your own physical body. Surely that statement is not too complex for you. Please do not permit any insidious pride that may be in your lower consciousness delude you into thinking you are the Christ in action at all times. I would not make so bold a statement if you were. Yes, I know there are some blessed chilas, oh so earnest, who will think I am severely chastising them and them alone. To use the idiomatic expression, if the shoe fits you, wear it. Now dry your tears and listen further. In my gentler capacity, know that I love you oh so much, else I would not use the energy allotted to me by the cosmic law in endeavoring to spur you on to spiritual accomplishment. You can change your consciousness in the twinkling of an eye if you do not constantly hold the imperfect concept close to you and cradle them in the comfortable feeling that they have belonged to you through the ages. In the name of God Almighty, I implore you, cooperate with your own silent watcher, your Christ self, and kneel before it and consecrate your cup to becoming at all times a holy grail through which the I am presence or any of the ascended and cosmic host can pour their blessings for the benefaction and progress of the race and the planet itself. We require chilas who are ever alert. I am not here to point out to you the imperfection which is rampant on the earth at this time. However, you should be vigilant with the lamp of the Christ burning at all times that when a disaster or turbulence of any kind presents itself to you, be it through the medium of the voice of another, the telephone, your telecast, or the printed word, that you immediately go into action to clean up the cause and core of whatever caused the condition to propel itself into the world of form. When life streams are taken out of the body, stop wailing about it. You do not know, and just as well, the interaction which caused this. Immediately go into action and do not let these entities float, as it were, all through the atmosphere. Lord Michael and others are always ready for this service and do go into action. But when Sheila's make the call, the additional energy required by the cosmic law permits greater service to be rendered. In this, in this regard, Lord Michael has referred many times to the energy given him by those of you who belong to the Friends of Mercy. Commendable, continue in this service. You will note I use over and over again the word service, for it should not be work for any chila to join with us in service, which is for us and should be for you, a joyful, enthusiastic emanation of energy from your beings. I have digressed a little, and I ask your indulgence, but I become so fired with enthusiasm when I have the opportunity of speaking with you that I endeavor to get in as many points as possible in the time allotted. Oh, that reference time. The way I like to use it is on time, all the time. That makes my heart sing. Back to the subject consciousness. It is the will of God for you, each and every one, to externalize the consciousness of the Christ here and now. When you make your early morning contemplation, I would remind you to surrender self to the Christ so that anchorage of the I am presence can render and bring about the will of God for all men. I challenge you to practice this for 30 days after you read this, and I assure you that you will know I have come this day bringing you a blessing, not a scolding. And now, dear Chilas, 
a closing statement. I love you, El Moria. Marvellous. Thank you so much, beloved Terry. Just beautifully read. And how wonderful now, because of, at this 30-day uh, period, the retreat open that we're focusing on is the will of God and international unity. So that will is really being charged into the consciousness of all mankind. So it's just a wonderful thing. So I thought that was really pertinent for what we're doing now. It's just really just so marvelous. Oh, Mara really fires us with enthusiasm. So this was quite interesting, I thought. So this is from, um, actually from the British Freedom Journal from 1959. It's from beloved Lord Timalaya. And he's talking about um, the origin of the song, Old Lang Syne. And he said, on Lemuria, on Lemuria, most of you were among the temple guards. We knew before she was to sink that the continent would go down due to the entrance of the many laggard souls. We knew that if the masses went out in fear, which cataclysmic action brings, that the soul would be bound to a much lower sphere at inner levels. Just as the animals that go out in fear in the stockyards are not at all as blessed as those that passed quietly in sleep in the shade of a tree at the close of their life. It was decided among the lords of life that the great sacrifice would be made among the temple guards. And while the documents and the valuables of Lemuria would be taken by boat to places of safety by the high priests of the temple, that a certain guard would remain. And as the captain stands with his ship, they would stand in their various in their various strategic locations as they sang with their choirs, let the continent sink. And that is what was done. Much of the light was brought into China and Tibet, and I was privileged, and I am still privileged to guard it. Much of it will be brought into your Western Hemisphere, and much of it has already been brought and is stored at the Teton, which we know is in the in Wyoming, in America, and Titicaca in um, South America, where God and Goddess Meru are. Through the stabilization of one individual, which you have noticed many times in stampedes of crowds, that one person's energy saves many souls, if not bodies, and they pass out in a state of peace. It happened on the Titanic. It happened in many of your disasters of fire, but it happened cosmically on Lemuria. The song they sang, I will ask you to sing today as we close. Okay, we're not going to sing that song. I did think about it, but we have sung it quite a bit since New Year. I've got something else today. But most of you sang it then, and mankind of Earth have brought it forth again today and have put very pathetic words to it, should, old and, should all acquaintance be forgot. As this continent went down, I went down with it. I chose to stay, but before it went, I said that one far distant day, we will sing this song again and know us victory is won. And that is today. And how just marvelous is that? So while the bodies of the people slept, while the night sky was blue, it was over and none had left their post. None of the guardians had evidenced fear and all went in dignity. Remember this and build your aura for a happier day true one when many will require the tranquility, the balance, the mastery, and the peace of you who have been nourished to this cosmic hour. I thank you, Himalaya. And I just have to add in here, and I hope Antoinette doesn't mind, I'm sure she won't, but Norman once had a vision where she um, and Norman had their, held, their arms held high and um, they were singing Old, Old Lang Syne and um, they were going down with, with the waters coming. They were actually must have been one of the temple guards. So there we have it, beloved Antoinette, who, you know, our beloved. So there, there we are. So now we're going to um, make this wonderful decree that we do every, um, every week. And I know every day we do a shorter decree for all our brothers and sisters that have left their physical bodies and are still caught in the psychic and astral realms. And as we know, it's such an important call and it really helps them. So we say together, beloved presence of God, I am in me and beloved immortal three, four flame of eternal truth within my beating heart and beloved Saint Germain. 
While my body sleeps this night, let all the constructive energy of my entire life stream, including that in my causal body, be used to render whatever service is needed in the violet flame temples established in the psychic and astral realms to draw the full gathered cosmic momentum of the violet purifying flame of divine love and compassion through every discarnate life stream there. Let all the souls who dwell in those realms be drawn into those purifying temples of mercy and compassion and have the accumulated destructively qualified energies of their life streams purified and transmuted so that when they are summoned for re-embodiment by the lords of karma, they bring into incarnation only a heritage of perfection and carry in their life streams no miscreations that would add to their own or the world's distress. We accept this done now with full cosmic power and so be it, beloved I am. And we thank you. Thank you. Thank you for answering that. All right. This is a very short one because uh, I think the, the, the video was quite long. And um, it actually, Roxanne sent it. It is just too sweet. It's the cat wanting to bring her babies to play with the baby. A very short, but very, very cute. Thank you, Roxanne, for sending this through, beloved. Why are you bringing your babies to Blossom? Why? You want them down here? You want them with Blossom? I don't know about that so much. Whoopsie, Summer wanting to uh, bring her babies to play with the baby whose name was Blossom. It's just too sweet. And she was very determined. It's just lovely. It just shows how the animals they also want to please us, bless their hearts. And so now we say our decree for all our beloved animal friends and the insects and the reptiles and all the beloved ones evolving on this beloved earth. We say together, beloved I am presence of all mankind, charge your mighty light of mercy and compassion to flow through us all and bring comfort to the animal kingdom. May each human being remember and accept their responsibility as guardians and protectors of this planet's pure, innocent life until all is set free and their divine plans fulfilled. We so decree it and so be it. In God's most holy name, I am. We accept it done and we thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to read um, about Emmanuel, who is the um, creator of Earth's initial centripetal force, the divine complement of the planetary silent watcher, beloved Immaculata. And in the books, they often refer to Immaculata as, the, as a brooding presence. And my goodness me, it's not surprising that she's had to hold the Immaculate concept for our beloved Earth with all the, you know, for the millions of years when things have been so, you know, dark, but she just knew that it wasn't real. It just was all temporary, ready to be transmuted. And so now we, I'm just going to read this here. It's very short, beloved Emmanuel. And this is from actually the goddess of light. So she speaks and she says, at the time when the planetary silent watcher was assigned to the earth, her divine complement offered to be the magnetizing center for all life in the earth, on the earth, and in its atmosphere. Thus, Emmanuel focused his energies in the very center of the globe being formed, setting up the initial centripetal force required to magnetize the spirit sparks prepared by Helios and Vesta, who had been waiting such magnetization in the seven spheres. So that was all the, the, in, the ones coming in the first root race. At the moment when Emmanuel and Immaculata had formed the rod of power, centripetal and centrifugal force, the first, the first root, the first root Manu, with his first subrace, took embodiment in beautiful shining forms. And we know the first root Manu was beloved Archangel Michael, and thus did the first golden age upon the planet Earth begin. Beloved Earth, what a long, long journey she's had. God bless her forever. And now we're going to actually sing to Beloved Immaculata. 
So because she's the divine complement of beloved Emmanuel, it's just so lovely. God bless her mighty heart forever, truly. Thank you, beloved Immaculata. And thank you, beloved Antoinette. You take over. Thank you, Anthea. And thank you for this wonderful opportunity that we now have to make these calls to bring our beloved Earth home. So we begin by giving our full attention to our mighty, beloved I Am Presence as we make these calls. We say together, mighty I Am Presence, great host of Ascended Masters, Archangels and Elohim, cosmic beings and great cosmic light, come forth now in all your cosmic power. Withdraw and withhold all power from destructive forces and individuals with destructive intent throughout the world right now and forever, whether it is conscious or unconscious. Expose, seize, bind and render helpless all these sinister forces and their activities until the light has removed them completely and illumine the source so this may never act again and raise up to positions of power the divinely chosen leaders. Replace all with ascended master consciousness and the divine plan fulfilled. We thank you. Our decree for protection. Beloved Mighty I Am Presence, Beloved Archangel Michael, and Beloved Commander Conrad, continually intensify your protective pillar of pure light substance and Archangel Michael's armor of light through and around me, charged with your invincible protection, all-powerful and impenetrable. I am invisible. I am invincible. I am invulnerable to anything but thy almighty perfection. I am grateful that we are given whatever added protection is needed 
And what we ask for ourselves, we ask for our loved ones and that which is constructive in all mankind and the world. Thank you. We just take that moment to visualize, to see and feel this mighty, impenetrable pillar of light, blue and crystal pillar of light surrounding each and every one of us, around our families and friends, our loved ones, around this group, and around all those across the face of the earth, standing up for truth, justice, and freedom for all life on this earth. God bless, direct, perfect, and protect each and every one. We thank you. Now this wonderful opportunity to call to the violet fire, this mighty violet flame that has the ability to shatter, dissolve, consume and transmute all misqualified energy of any kind back to the beginning of time. We say together, mighty I am presence, beloved Saint Germain and those that minister to the violet flame, come forth now and blaze your cosmic violet fire and cause a mighty victory for all the world to see. I am the law of forgiveness in cosmic action now. I am the victory of the sacred fire in all its cosmic power. Mighty angels descend with your purple wands of fire and strike them into the center of every place where there has been a history of sinister force activity. Transmute and consume it all. Cause, call, record, effect, and memory, and set it all free from that which was never meant to be. Replace it all with the ascended master consciousness and the divine plan fulfilled. We thank you.
our decree for the elementals. I am the light of God that never fails, purifying, loving, thanking and blessing the great directors of the elemental kingdom and every beloved earth, water, air and fire elemental for your ceaseless service to me and to all mankind. I am the mighty cosmic light, awakening all mankind to the great intelligence of this kingdom. And so be it, beloved I am, we thank you. In the name of my mighty I am presence, great cosmic beings and great cosmic light, I decree, I am the presence, charging the minds and feelings of everybody in America and the world with Saint Germain's Ascended Master Consciousness and Perfection, right now and forever. I am the Presence, blessing, illumining, perfecting, and setting all free in service to the light. Beloved Cosmic I Am Presence and Great Goddess of Liberty, Direct the cosmic light of liberty as of a thousand suns into the cause and call of anything attempting to delay the divine plan of the great white brotherhood for the earth's eternal freedom and release us from all tyranny here and now. And so be it. Beloved I am, we thank you. Our decree for divine justice. I am the most intensified cosmic action of the flame of divine justice blazing throughout the world right now and forever. I am the law. I am the, just, the justice. I am the judge. I am the jury. Knowing that I am all powerful, then I know that only divine justice can be done everywhere, here and now. Beloved Lady Portia, ensure divine justice prevails throughout the world, right now and forever. And so be it, and so it is, and it is done. Beloved I am, we thank you. Before we say our final decree, we just call to beloved mighty victory to enfold each and every one of us in his luminous presence to just fill us with his full feeling of victorious accomplishment. We say together, I am the victory of the light. I am the victory of the light. I am the victory of the light. I am the cosmic flame of victory, which reigns supreme everywhere, right now and forever. We accept these calls answered as they are made, according to thy will, with full cosmic power, maintained and doubled each hour until fully manifest. And so be it, and so it is, and it is done. Beloved I am, we thank you. We end off by putting our full attention on love, pure divine love, as we make this call to the secret love star that mighty focus of cosmic divine love from the great central sun, that focus of love shining in the heavens for this 2000 year period, that supreme light that cannot be requalified by human thoughts or feelings. And now by the power of our I am presence, we say to all human creation, all misqualified thoughts, feelings, and actions, you have no power. Your end has come. And we now invoke those pink and golden rays from the secret love star to go forth. And we ask that all life on this earth be clothed, saturated in the substance from the secret love star. That substance that pushes out all imperfection, all limitation, all division or separation or disharmony of any kind. Beloved secret love star, fill every cell, atom, and electron of our four earthly bodies, fill all life on this earth with those feelings of love and adoration, with peace and harmony, 
with gratitude and reverence for life, with kindness and tolerance, with charity, with grace and goodwill, with that feeling of unity, Saint Germain's holy family. Beloved I am Presence, beloved Secret Love Star, make each and every one of us a living son of pure divine love. Mighty radiating centers of divine love in our own homes and families, in our towns and cities, in our country, in all the nations of the world. And we send our love and gratitude to all the beings of light who maintain and sustain this great focus of light. And we send our love and gratitude for this opportunity to add our light to these calls for the freedom of our earth and all life on her. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you, beloved Antoinette, just marvelous. Now we've got the closing invocation. And um, I just want to think who'd like to um, to to read it, perhaps. Um, Jenny, Jenny Kling, beloved, are you able to read? Yes, I am. I'd, I'd be honored to do that. Thank you so much. Closing invocation. Before ending the session, we all say with mics muted. Beloved I am presence and beloved Master Kathumi, nourish the seeds planted in my consciousness so that the ideas entrusted to me become manifest flowers of perfect expression in my world and the world of all my fellow men. Beloved presence of God I am, pour the light of thy great glory upon my consciousness and nourish the seeds planted by the Masters. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, marvellous. Right. Thank you so much, everybody. Bless you. Let's just take a moment of deep gratitude for these marvellous teachings and for our many blessings and for the opportunity to serve the light. Just deep, deep gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. So feel free to put on your videos and we can chat a little bit before we end, if you want. <laughs> Whoops, here we go. Well, let me see. Oh, oh, my light is shining really bright. <laughs> there we go. There you go. How are you? How lovely, your light is shining very bright, that's true. <laughs> it is, it is. Let me put this shade up. <laughs> that a little better. <laughs> Oh, it's still coming in. That's how bright you got my light today. <laughs> you <got> so bright. <laughs> That's the noonday sun here in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, marvelous. Anthea, Anthea you stopped my video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know why? Because it was on. Um, hold on, beloved. It was on by mistake. Um, there we go. Let's see if it comes on now. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because for Anna's sake, you had it on. You didn't realize. Yeah. <laughs> really and here, I, I want to say to such, I, I can't even begin to express fully enough the deep, profound gratitude I have for you, Antoinette, and all the pillars, Donna, Terry, all those, John, Delia, all those holding the space and being so constant in shining the light on the path and heart has changed my life and I'm feeling so emotional, but such deep gratitude for the teachings and for all of those who bring it to us so constantly and so beautifully. Thank you. Big, big thank you. Oh, bless you, beloved Jane. Well, I mean, it's, it's really not us, is it? And we all join together with our own presence. So we just you know, following the guidance. And it's such, such a blessing, isn't it? I mean, it's not work, as I said, service. Yeah, it's just lovely. Yeah. I, I, I just want to say something. Hello, um, hello, Anthea. How are you today? 
Greetings from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's it's 20 degrees today. And I swap mm. this one. It's warm in my apartment, but I like to wear it. People are like, why are you dressed like that? <laughs> but there's one thing I want to say. Um, Anthea, uh, I, I I I my special thanks to you and the mighty I am presence because as you know, I found you on YouTube. No one brought me here. Well, I guess you all did, but you know, I was brought to to this this segment of people here rather unusually there's no one in my immediate circle who introduced me right and i want to say this i thank you all every single one of you here because we are a group that are you know helping to raise the vibrations of the planet and i just wanted to thank all of you antoinette and all of you because of you i i, I say my decrees and i'm doing all these things and the most important part, my life has been completely transformed with each right. decree I say, with each, um, the decrees are so, so powerful. They are just amazing. And what had I not, so Anthea, I'm a personally thanking you only because I came to, it was through you that I started this whole process, but I want to thank Antoinette. I want to thank all of you here on this site. I love you all to the moon and back and may you yeah. all be blessed and have intense love, wisdom, and power and lots and lots of love wherever you may go. Thank you. Thank, bless you. you. Thank, yes, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I, we don't like to take credit for anything because it's not us. We know it's the beloved Iron Prisons and, and the Ascended Masters bring us all together. You know, they do. Uh -huh. 